With this legislation, we support NASA's scientists, engineers, astronauts, and their pursuit of discovery. <laughs> this bill will make sure that NASA's most important and effective programs are sustained. In exactly five days, we will be $100 billion richer. <laughs> I am honored to sign this new bill. The folks behind me have been so involved in it. They love NASA. They love everything it stands for. It supports NASA's deep space exploration. Uh, these astronauts are amazing. Uh, I've met some of them. They are very brave people. And they're right at the forefront, so we salute them. So let's dedicate this to NASA. It's called The Snake. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night and as soon as she arrived, she found that pretty snake she'd taken in, had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed that vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, oh heavens, you would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed him and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, that snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I have saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, heavens, why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Mr. President, on behalf of NASA, I'd like to present you with this astronaut flight jacket. Thank you very much for your support.
you go, playing your song way up here, I think. <laughs> D. Hopefully you played it in D. What are we learning by being in space? Well, I think probably the International Space Station Space Station Space Station Space Station is providing a key bridge from us doing uh, um, living on Earth to going somewhere into deep space. So on those Mars missions, we need to better understand how microgravity is really affecting our body, and we need to understand it in great detail. We also uh, are cleaning up our urine and making it drinkable. You know, now I'm talking to the President of the United States while hanging from a wall. <laughs> while hanging from a wall. While hanging, hanging, hanging from a wall. Look.
Who's ready to go to Mars up there? We are absolutely ready to go to Mars. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic journey getting there. To these missions that we're working on to, to, to Mars, uh, the human element, the human physiology element, uh, I think we've nailed it. We really have. And we've got lots of techniques now as to how to deal with living in microgravity. We've still got some technical challenges to overcome, and, and we're working on those. But it really is, you know, the next steps to the moon, to Mars, and beyond are well within our reach. And that's hugely exciting. Even more importantly, you always hear us talk about the journey to Mars. And I, I say we will not get there. We cannot get there. I say we will not get there. We cannot get there. We can't keep doing the kinds of things that, that NASA should be doing. How do you go to the bathroom in space? We're going to find that out today here with, with Scott is going to tell us, okay. right? Okay. That is our functional trainer. That one can be used. This one over here. That's right. That's where we're going to spend most of our time because that one can be used. This is our positional trainer. So you can see there's a TV monitor here. There's a TV monitor there. There's a camera inside the hole. That's correct. You'll notice the hole here is four inches. The hole is four inches? Whereas a normal toilet seat is more like 12 or 18 inches. What's a normal, you mean like the one you have in your house? That's right. All right. Alignment is important. Right. So the benefit of this is, if they're not confident that they have good alignment, they can come turn on the camera, right. or they can turn the camera off, find their alignment on the seat, right. flip the camera on, and see if they've... And see over here, we can see right in the... And you can sit down on that thing and look over here and check your alignment. And now you're going to go over the high fidelity train. All right. Ta-da. We're there. Foot, toe, restraints down and locked. So, that's it. So this is to su support your feet while you're sitting on the uh, right. on the potty. Right. You have your feet right. You, you know, support your feet. Right. I'm going to use the commode. You can put your feet or the toe restraints down at the bottom. If you... All right. Ready? Sounds good. Uh, okay, okay. So so far we talked about your positioning aid. That was for number two. Right. When you go number when you go number one. Well, that's what the, you have that you have that hose there. Yeah, but you that's also right. have the toe strap. To the toe strap, that's what you're saying, to hold you while you're right. using, while you're uh, using going number one into the hose. Solid, solid waste and liquid waste go two different places. Check cradles and auto. Check mode is auto. One. Okay. Command okay. subsection. One. There it goes. Okay. Press it for Unstow hose and cradle and check for Good. It's working. Sucking. Good. Okay. Check WCS on light on. Yep. Stow the hose and the cradle. And then we're going to put a little baggie in there, right? Trash bag. All right. This little baggie, uh, the air can suck to the bottom of so that whatever you throw in here sort of gets sucked down into the bottom of the bag. Hydro. Yeah. Hydrophobic. Yeah. And we put that bag and that's where you... Toilet paper is going to be used in there. That's right. And then you, when you're done, you tie it up, throw it away, and put it in. Elbow bag. Elbow bag. Let's see. Um, Steve already pointed it out. You guys are flying all male funnels. Yes. But for the sake, are all guys. For the sake of observation here, male funnels don't have any venting. Uh, Steve already mentioned the whole unit works on air. Uh, female crew members have three choices for their anatomy-based uh, funnel choices, and they're all vented. The difference is. For women, we want their anatomy against the funnel, but we still need the airflow. For men, we do not want them docking to the funnel. Uh, to that end, also, if uh, you're urinating and the funnel's filling with water, you need to slow down because we don't want to flood the fan separator. Uh, do you guys use, did you guys use the high restraints at all, or just, just that's the benefit of the mirror is if you don't if you can't tell if something's attached to you, you can look. It's underneath your aft locker, so you have to remove lockers to get to these things. Uh, really? You fly adult diapers, those are standard complement. This is an Apollo fecal bag, and uh, you have a finger cut for wiping. It is a, an adhesive attachment. Um, <laughs> okay, any questions? You guys have done this before, so uh, simple reminders, keep it clean, uh, alignment's your friend, solid waste in the commode, urine goes down the tube, nothing else. These are these are thigh restraints. They are helpful for getting in and out. 
actually. As handles? Just as handles. You really didn't use them? Huh? No. You didn't use them? No, I just, I used, just used the roof. Yeah, but I use the thigh. I think I use the thigh restraints. What I do is I sit where I'm comfortable. Where right. I scooch. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Right. You know, I, I, you know, what I think of. I think of uh, uh, Peter Fonda in Easy Rider riding a chopper. <laughs> that's I thought I was riding a chopper, and that's the right position for me. Now, I just wanted to ask. I think if if people were interested in the scuba diving before you did your training, if you had any any uh, divers. Uh, interested in uh, in diving and marine life. As a matter of fact, uh, Catfield and I, when we started training for this mission two and a half, almost three years ago, we started off uh, on a scuba trip. We lived underwater in a laboratory on the bottom of the ocean for two weeks, and we left the habitat with our deep sea uh, um, suits on. So Shane, looks like you're getting clear, cleaned up there. Um, change to the glove itself of either one. Copy, Shane. You can translate back to the airlock, a reminder to pick up your green hook on 1131, and also a reminder just from what I've seen in the pool. And also a reminder just from what I've seen in the pool. From what I've seen in the pool. From what I've seen in the pool. Five, four, three, two, one. From what I've seen in the pool. Five, four, three, two, one. Also a reminder just from what I've seen in the pool. And also a reminder just from what I've seen in the pool.
spacewalks, but it's a bit of a misnomer. It's more like a space floating. You're really not out there walking. And I guess uh, the best analogy I can uh, tell everybody is if you could imagine yourself scuba diving in a suit of armor, that's about what spacewalking is like. I put a spell on you. on you.